Hey everybody, Mike here. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about nested ESXi. More specifically, what is it? Do you need it? Why would you do it? What are some of the benefits? So I'm excited about it. Now, before we jump in, I need you guys to do me a big favor. 70% of people viewing this video right now are not subscribed and that's a problem. So. If you're not subscribed, do me a huge favor, hit subscribe for more content like this. Now that you did that, we can get into it. So what is nested ESXi? Well, ultimately it's ESXi that is inside of something else. So it's nested. Well, let's take a step back. Let's talk about just regular ESX for just one minute. Now, when we talk about ESX or vSphere, we'll use those terms interchangeably, by the way. We're talking about a system, in this case, a lab computer here, that is running vSphere by VMware. And we're using that as essentially the hypervisor for this system. So what that means is that this host right here does not have an operating system in the traditional sense. It doesn't have Windows 10 installed on it or Linux or anything like that. It has vSphere or ESXi installed on its hard drive. So that's what it's running. Now on top of that, we can run VMs or virtual machines, right? So that is normal vSphere. That is if you go into you know, a data center, you have a big server, you'll have vSphere running on it and then you'll have VMs on top of it. Now, when we say nested ESX or nested vSphere, what we're talking about is basically we do that same thing I just described. So in this case, we run vSphere on the server right here, but then we go in and we create a new VM and that VM, guess what? We install ESX on that. So that might sound a little confusing. So let's check this out on the whiteboard. So in our case, let's say we have that host that we're working with right now. I'll just say this is Mike's host. You know, it's interesting, this is orange. I didn't plan that for Halloween, that's kind of funny. So let's let's change that, I'm not a big fan of orange. All right, now we have this host and just so we're clear, we'll say, uh, you know, vSphere. So it's running vSphere on it. And then on top of that, we're gonna install or create a VM and I'll say VM. Now, when we go into that VM itself, we're gonna actually modify it and we're going to basically install the operating system will be basically the ESXi ISO image, also known as vSphere. So we'll boot from that image and when it comes up, essentially at the end state here, is this will be running ESXi and then here's the nested part, right? On top of that, guess what? Now we can log into that host, our nested host, and we can create VMs. So yes, we essentially have VMs on a host that is a VM itself on another host. So if you've seen the movie Inception, it's kind of a weird situation like that. How complex is the idea? Now you might be asking yourself, why would I want to do that? The biggest reason is, well, let me give you my lab as an example. I have four physical hosts sitting here. This is one of them and I have three others. And I do a lot of labbing and that kind of thing, right? So I have vSphere installed on this host. Do I want to, you know, like mess up this host while I'm labbing and have to reinstall everything, right? No, I don't. It would be much easier if I messed up a VM inside of this host, which is my nested ESX, I can play with that. If I decide I did something wrong or I don't wanna play with that version, I can delete the VM itself, create a new VM and install ESX on that again. That whole process, because it was nested, I'd never touch the actual hypervisor on this host right here. So to me, it's a huge benefit if you're into labbing because it kind of isolates your study environment from, I would say, your production environment where you're actually, you know, you, I need this to run so that I can learn, right? Now, there are some networking implications that come along with doing nested ESX, but I think a lot of people overcomplicate this. In a nutshell, let's look at the whiteboard. So. Typically, you know, we have a, a lab environment. I'm gonna draw this as good as I can. We'll see. Uh, we have a switch here, right? And that switch is connected to this host. So we have a physical cable that we'd plug into this host right here. And on that link right there, I typically recommend making that an 802.1Q trunk. And I'll just put trunk. And what that means is we're going to allow all VLANs on, from my physical switch to this host. So if I want to access any of those VLANs inside of the host, I need to do tagging and that sort of thing. Now, what I recommend people do typically is inside of this host, we're gonna have to create a port group for this nested host to connect to. So in this case, you know, we have uh, on the physical host right here, right? We have, we'll say, I'll just say a standard switch. It can be a distributed switch, standard switch, doesn't really matter, but that is connected to that uplink. So it owns that uplink on this host right here. 
Now, in this case, we need to create that port group so that we can connect it to our nested host. A lot of people wonder about what should that port group be? My recommendation, I just make this, I call it all VLAN. I create a port group that is trunking all VLANs. So in, in vSphere, I actually create it and I say trunk VLAN 0 to 4094. So I want all VLANs being passed through to that VM. So the net result is when we log into that nested ESX instance and we manage it in vCenter and all of that, it'll look very, very much like a regular ESX host. It won't really know that it's just a lowly VM in our environment nested. So that's the goal is that we end up with this situation where we feel like we're in real vSphere because we are, but we, you know, it's, we feel like we have dedicated hardware. In this case, we're just nesting a bunch of hosts inside of this thing. So that's all I have for you in this lesson. Hopefully that makes sense. I wanted to put this out there because I know there's a lot of folks getting into some of the other stuff on my channel like NSX that maybe aren't as familiar with the kind of virtualization side of things. Maybe you're a network engineer, that kind of thing coming into this space and have a little bit to learn. So I figured this might be helpful to someone that is just getting started. So that said, I hope everyone's staying safe and healthy. Until next time, you know it, stay nerdy. Oh, this is heavy. This is really heavy. Where, where am I going? Where am I putting it? Oh, I go, go this way. Nope. Yep, go this way.